As we look at some of the, the areas of investment here that have the most upside heading into 2024, then what stands out to you? I'm looking at some of that M&A activity we saw with Blue Origin. Yeah, well, 2023 was a difficult year for startups and for fundraising, for sure. And um, uh, we are seeing, you know, we're looking, um, uh, the space economy has been ha has been very resilient, actually. So, um, and a lot of this is because everyone in this market where enterprise dollars are tight, everyone is chasing government dollars and um, satellite companies are providing essential information, data and services for enterprises and governments um, who are willing to buy regardless of market cycles. So um, in 2023, we actually saw some record revenues for a lot of companies throughout the space economy, which is showing how um, some of these companies and some of these segments are actually counter cyclical and resilient. So we expect that to continue into 2024 and beyond as defense um, becomes um, inextricably linked between um, commercial space activities um, and the geopolitic um, reality that, that we live in today. Uh, Chad, it's Akiko here. Uh, good to talk to you again. Uh, let's talk about a story that I know you've been following closely, even though you said uh, the focus on sort of moon landing is still a small portion of the overall space economy. Um, what's happened with Astrobotic, the lander that was developed um, by the company, which you are an investor in, uh, certainly hasn't gone as planned because of the propellant link that's happened. There's a lot of investments on this hope of a robust lunar economy. And I wonder to what extent you think this could be a big setback in that? Well, it's certainly not ideal. Um, you know, they've been building um, for the last 16 years to this moment. So it was a real gut punch for the company. Um, this was the first US launch to the moon in over 50 years, government or private. So the fact that they had a valve issue and a fuel leak that's gonna prevent them from getting to the lunar surface is certainly um, uh, not great. But that being said, you know, the, the, the team has done an incredible job of, of testing systems and, and maximizing these mission milestones. And, um, you know, we've been lucky, actually, that they've been very transparent and have been sharing these updates as um, things have progressed. So, um, look, it's the NASA's Artemis program that's underpinning a lot of the growth in, in the lunar industry. They're committing billions of dollars to build a permanently crewed outpost on the moon. And um, Astrobotic was the first of the commercial lunar payload services program, which is the robotic precursor missions to the human um, Artemis missions. And so um, NASA has a lot of confidence in this team and their capability. That's why they knew that they were the first, um, uh, the first company up to deliver on these contracts. And they have trusted them again with um, more an another mission later this year to carry a larger uh, more valuable uh, rover, it's called Viper, that's going to go to the South Pole and look for resources on the moon. So there has been a billion dollars invested into lunar companies over the last several years. Um, uh, Astrobotic is a leading um, company in this area. And while this was unfortunate, they have another mission later this year. And we have several other um, uh, missions, US and international, later this year. So there's going to be a lot of activity going towards the moon in 2024.